The Adidas Consortium World Tour made its way to Sweden at the end of 2016, where the team at Sneakers and Stuff gave the D-Row 7 Prime Knit a premium makeover. Featuring dual layered prime knit, suede overlays, and a great color combination, this collaboration is a real winner. Let's take a look. Hey all, what is up? Reese here and I've got a brand new sneaker pickup to show you. What we're looking at today is the Adidas Consortium and Sneakers and Stuff collaboration on the D-Row 7 Prime Knit. Colors listed on the site for these are Onyx, Yellow, and White, and they also feature hits of blue throughout. These released at Sneakers and Stuff on November 29th, 2016, and then saw a wider release at a handful of other retailers on December 3rd. Retail price for these is $180. If you followed my channel recently, you'll know that I picked up the Adidas Crazy Explosive in the past couple months to use as my main basketball shoes. When I was doing my research and trying to find a pair that I wanted to grab to wear on court, the d 7 was also a shoe that was high on my list. Obviously, I ended up going with the Crazy Explosive, but it made me really interested in the d 7 and I decided I wanted to pick up a pair at some point. Aesthetically, I like these a little bit more than the Crazy Explosive, so I kind of decided that at some point I'd find a pair of the d 7 that I like to wear casually. Now there is an engineered mesh version that retails for $140 and a prime knit version that retails for $160. And I really was interested in the prime knit version simply because I love prime knit. It's just like fine knit, it's one of my favorite materials. It just, it has such a great feeling. It's, it works really well with your foot. It's great right out of the box and it's something that I always just enjoy on a sneaker. However, I didn't love either of the initial colorways of the Adidas D-07 Prime Knit. There was the solar red pair, which was fine. There was the pair that looked kind of like a tennis ball, which was also fine. I just, neither really did it for me. And then I saw these and I just fell in love. Sneakers and Stuff did a great job creating a simple but interesting colorway. And they did a lot of extra things to this shoe that make it stand out from the regular D-Row 7. We'll get into all of that in the close-up view coming up here. As I mentioned before, this is an Adidas Consortium release. The shoe is actually part of the Adidas Consortium World Tour. This was something Adidas did throughout 2016 where they partnered with different boutique retailers from around the world and gave them each a chance to really put their own spin on a different Adidas model. We've seen an NMD, we've seen a couple of tubulars, some retro Adidas runners, but this is actually the ver first uh, performance basketball sneaker tackled in the World Tour. Sneakers and Stuff talked about how their focus for this was thinking about how basketball sneakers have a really strong crossover into the casual market. A ton of people wear everything from retros to modern performance sneakers off the court and they really wanted to tap into that with some premium features that gave these a really nice look no matter where you're rocking them. As far as the colorway goes, they pulled a couple levels of inspiration for the yellow and blue featured here. The first most obvious tie-in is just to the colors of the Swedish flag. Sneakers and Stuff is actually a Swedish sneaker store. There's a tongue twister for you. They're based in Stockholm, and so that was a nice tie-in to their country. In addition, the, it also pays tribute to their very first collaboration with Adidas. Back in 2009, they collaborated on the Stockholm silhouette and released a pair that had a very similar colorway. It was a gray base with hits of yellow and blue throughout. Finally, they actually made a tie-in to the signature athlete behind this shoe, Derek Rose. Yellow and blue were the colors he wore as an athlete at Simeon Academy, which was his high school in Chicago. So it's cool that they were able to pull some significance for the colors really on different, a couple different levels, tying in both to their own heritage as a company and also to the athlete behind the shoe. I think that's pretty neat. Now that's a really good high level overview of this sneaker. So now let's dive into a close up view. We'll take a look at the colors materials, and everything that sets this apart from an average D-Row 7 Prime Knit. Before we get into the shoe itself, I want to show off the box. This is a really well done box. You can see it's done in like a maroon color. It almost looks like a leather bound book or something like that. All the way around you've got Adidas branding in kind of this gold color. You can see it's the modern Adidas logo. Some of the other releases that have been like retros or older shoes will have the Adidas Originals logo instead. There it is there and there. 
On this side, you've got the tag. You can see it's the DRO7 Prime Knit SNS, size 13, which is my size. Up on the top of the box, you've got again that big Adidas, kind of the modern logo. It says Adidas Consortium Series, and it has sneakers and stuff, and then the handshake, which is the Consortium logo. Taking a look at the shoe itself. Again, you've got Prime Knit construction featured here. This is something different than what we've seen on other DRO 7s with Prime Knit, and really something different than what I've seen on any Prime Knit shoe that I own. We've basically got a two layer Prime Knit going on here. You can see the top layer is just that soft gray, and then below it, where you can see there's these holes where you can kind of see into it, you've got a knit that mixes between the yellow and the blue. So although the shoe really looks gray, you've actually got a couple hits of color through all those little holes, which is really kind of interesting and something I've never seen done with Prime Knit. You've got fuse overlays for the three stripes right here on the lateral side. You've got some more aggressive fuse right here on the medial side wrapping around the toe just to help with some of that lateral stability and you see some more right there for some of the lower eyelets. Now if we kind of slide back a little, you've got these support wings on the regular DRO7, both the engineered mesh and the permanent version, that's a synthetic leather, but you can see here it actually features a nice suede material, which is one of those premium upgrades for kind of that casual market. On the lateral side, you've got the eyelets done up in blue down along there, and on the medial side, you can see done in yellow. You've got more of that suede wrapping kind of around the collar to the back where you can see a little more prime knit as well. The tongue also features that suede. You've got the D-Rose logo up top. You can see there's kind of a molded foam throughout the tongue and also the collar to give some nice padding when you use those wings to really lock yourself back into the heel. It's gonna be hard to see the um, sock liner, but you've got a yellow sock liner with uh, Adidas Consortium branding. It's got like just in diagonal over and over consortium in block letters and then the handshake logo. Then one shoe on top of that features the Adidas logo in white, the other features the sneakers and stuff logo. The lining of the shoe and the inside of the tongue is a yellow with some blue dotting. Here you've got the uh, heel counter, same as what we've seen on the regular Dero 7. You've got stars on one side, the Adidas logo on the other. And you can see this is kind of a mix of like a matte finish and then down here you've got a glossy finish. There's Derek Rose's signature. And you can see there's kind of a lip here that helps protect that boost from getting scuffed up or kind of smashed down if someone steps over you. For the laces, you've got gray round laces, white tips with the sneakers and stuff logo. These do also come with some extra sets of laces. You've got all white and then the a combination of yellow and blue. I really like these, but I think I'm gonna keep the gray just because it's a very clean look. One thing I also love that's different from the regular D-Rose 7 is you've actually got a legitimate pull tab here, not those really flimsy looking tiny ones that look almost like an afterthought. You can see on the right shoe, you've got the Adidas Consortium handshake logo in yellow, and on the left shoe, you've got the SNS or sneakers and stuff logo. Looking at the midsole now, these feature full length boost, and it's not quite the same as something we see on the Crazy Explosive. This is a much firmer cushioning setup, similar to the Crazy Light Boost 2016. Um, it's, to me, it's not the ideal setup just because Adidas has shown with both the Crazy Explosive and like the Ultra Boost that they can achieve a really good balance between responsiveness and cushioning, although this will help improve cord feel. So if that's something that's important to you, the D-Row 7 may be a great shoe. It is uh, thinner with the boost up front, so you get really good cord feel up front. You do get a little more cushioning here at the heel. Again, it's just not quite the same as something you'd expect from boost if you're really used to like the Ultra Boost and how kind of plush those are with the cushioning. On the medial side, you can see you've got fully exposed boost. On the lateral side, you've got exposed for the rear half little bit at the toe, but then the outsole wraps up kind of through the middle section, helps with some of that side to side stability because that does come up a little bit over the footbed. You can see the traction pattern coming up. With that, we'll flip to the outsole. You've got a translucent outsole with herringbone traction. The traction pattern is supposedly inspired by the Chicago Fire. Um, regardless, I've heard it's really, really 
great traction. It's a little different when you've got the translucent outsole, not quite as good versus some of the engineered mesh colorways that have a solid outsole, but still pretty solid. You can see a yellow TPU spring plate through there with Adidas branding. And now this translucent outsole, it's hard to see. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up well, but it's kind of got an icy color and it almost has a little bit of like a rose or a slight pinkish tint. It, it, it's not overbearing at all and I think it looks good with the shoe. It's just something I kind of noticed when you actually have them in hand. Now that about wraps it up for the review of this sneaker. I think this is gonna be a little longer video, but it is a really neat shoe. It's still available at sneakers and stuff and some other retailers. I'll make sure to put some links below if you're interested. Let me know in the comments what you think of the d 7 and specifically this collaboration. Don't forget to give a thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and would like to see more like this. And above all, have a great day. Thank you for watching.